Hi, it's Noel from creationeffects.com, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the creation film effects template for After Effects so that uh, you can instantly turn your normal footage into very authentic looking old or damaged film. So, what you're looking at now are some of the presets that come with the template. The template includes 40 presets, and these are finished film looks. And all you have to do is drop in your footage and they're ready to export. And uh, you can customize the presets. So if it's too much damage or too much dirt or too much flicker, you can just turn it down. And uh, you can also build your own film look because the template includes over 350 customizable effects that you can easily apply to your footage. And these effects are very high quality and totally authentic looking because every effect in here was either modeled after real film glitches or made from real film footage. All the effects are organized into categories. So you have film burns and color grading effects, dust and scratches, intros, outros, transition effects, and a whole lot more. And over nine minutes of stock footage of uh, film leaders and projector flickers, perforations, and various textures. So I promise you, you're not going to find a larger or more realistic collection of film effects out there. But if you're watching this, you probably already have the template. So let's move on to the tutorial. First of all, so you don't get any error messages when you open the project, there is a correct way of opening the zip file after you download it. If you're on a Mac, you can just double click it. But if you're on a PC, you should right click the zip file and choose the extract all option. And then once you see the files, you should make a copy of the project file so that you always have a copy with the uh, original settings that you can use for future projects. All right, when you open the project, you'll see there's some general instructions here. That's this comp here. I'll just close that for now. And then the first thing you want to do is import your footage and put it into this comp named your footage. And this will let you preview all of the effects and presets with your footage. So I'll go to File, and Import, and File, and Find My Footage. Here it is, so I'll just drag that to the comp. So now, if I go to my Presets folder and open one of the presets, like 60's Day at the Beach, and I'll open this main comp, and now you can see our footage with all of these effects applied. I'll go over the presets in a moment, but first I want to show you the effects and how you can build your own film look, and then that will help in understanding how to customize the presets. So I'll open my film effects folder where you can see all the categories of effects here. And I'll open this comp named main comp, add your effects here. And you can see your footage is already inside here, along with a number of just basic effects that are here to get you started. Notice that the layers are color-coded. In this template, red layers are instruction layers or control layers. Just uh, unhide an instruction layer to read the notes on what you're supposed to do. And most of the effects in the template are on these yellow layers. And that means they're copy and paste effects. So to apply the effect, you just select the layer, copy it, and paste it in any comp above your footage. And finally, there's the blue layers, which are either your footage or pre-comp effects. And a lot of the most interesting effects are pre-comp effects, uh, but I'll get more into those later. So this is the comp in which you would build your own custom film look, and you don't have to keep these default effects if you don't want. And for the sake of demonstration, I'm just going to delete all of these and start new. So now all we have is our footage layer. And I want to make this footage old and damaged. Well, color grading is a good place to start. So I'll open my color grading folder, and inside we'll see a preview comp to preview each effect. I'll open this up, and you can see there are 30 color grading effects. And uh, since your footage is already at the bottom, you can preview any of these with your footage just by turning the layer on. And you can choose one. Or if you want to try a combination of these, you can get a bunch of different kinds of looks. I'm just going to go with this monochrome yellow effect. It's a yellow layer, so I can just copy it and go back to my main comp and paste it above my footage layer. And now I want to add a blur. Um, because old film is blurry. So I'll open the blurring effects folder and open the preview comp to see all my blurring effects. 
and you can see there's a blurry flicker here or a border blur, an in and out of focus blur effect. Uh, I could preview each one by turning it on and off. I'm just gonna go with a standard blur and I'll copy and paste that into my main comp. Now I need some grain. Uh, that can be found in the grain, dust, and hair folder. I'll select the grain effect, and while I'm here, I'll grab one of these dust textures. Uh, usually you would preview these and find the one that you like best, but I'll just be quick and select this stock footage clip here. So I'll copy those and go back to my main comp and paste. And by the way, most of these copy and paste effects are customizable using slider controls. So with an effect selected, go to the effect controls panel and you'll see these slider controls that are programmed to change the look and behavior of the effect. So for example, with a grain, I can turn the size and the softness way up and turn down the intensity and get a much larger grain. I'll go to the Scratches and Lines preview comp because now I want my film to be all scratched up. Uh, now these are, these are all yellow layers, so they're copy and paste effects, but you can tell from this icon that they're also all pre-comps. And when it's a pre-comp like this, you won't find the customization controls on the layer. And uh, if you read the marker notes on the layer, it says, this texture has many customization options on the control layer inside this comp. So to customize it, just double click the layer to open the pre-comp. And usually inside you'll find a red layer named control layer. And on that control layer, you'll see a bunch of slider controls for customizing the effect. And you'll notice uh, whenever there's an effect like this, it's a pre-comp, it will have its own folder here in the project panel where it's stored. So you could drag and drop the pre-comp from here into your main comp but I recommend always copying your effects from the preview comp and pasting them into the, your main comp. And the reason for that is because these layers do sometimes have slider controls on them, which might be helpful. Uh, most notably, there are these auto on off blinking controls, uh, which I need to talk about because these are everywhere in this template. This template has well over a hundred different textures for overlaying over your footage and many of them will look better if they're not constantly showing, but rather if they just flicker on and off every, every now and then. So that's what these controls do. They allow you to set how often an effect should be visible. And you can see there's a minimum on time and maximum on time, and a minimum off time and maximum off time. And these values are in seconds. Uh, so when you enter values in here, the layer will flicker on and off randomly within the boundaries that you set here, uh, which is great when you have something like a really heavy mold texture and you don't want it to, to cover your footage for the entire comp. Anyway, back to creating my film look, I'll uh, copy this fractal noise scratches comp and paste it into my main comp above my footage. Okay, and maybe I'll add a flicker effect to make this more interesting. Um, I like this intermittent frame jerks effect here. Uh, the flicker generator is really much more powerful, but this is a fast effect and creates a nice little random flicker, so I'll copy that. And uh, actually also this uh, destabilize effect. Every film look should have this one. It just adds a subtle shake, because uh, that's what old films do. And I'll increase the flicker amount. Okay, and lastly, I want to change the frame rate. Uh, that's an important effect for getting any old film look. Um, the frame rate effect is in the time folder. Frame rate adjustment. Frame rate always goes at the top because it has to affect all the layers. And 16 frames per second is fine. I personally prefer really low frame rates, like 18 or less. Uh, it does a lot to make it look like really old film. Now, unfortunately, this frame rate adjustment effect causes delays in previewing in After Effects Creative Cloud. Uh, it doesn't cause any problems in the Creative Suite versions, but currently in Creative Cloud, it causes delays. So throughout the template, 
in all of the presets, I have this layer off by default. And uh, you can just keep it off while you're customizing your film look uh, to make it run faster. And then when you're ready to preview or render, just be sure to remember to turn it back on. And if you're using Creative Cloud, it's probably going to take a while to load that first frame after you turn it on. Uh, it may sit there for 30 seconds or so, but after that first frame loads, the rest of the comp should render normally. So you can see I've rendered this and we have a nice little 1940s, 1930s, 16 millimeter camera look. Um, these effects are all pretty basic. We didn't even get into any of the really fun stuff, but it was quick and it shows you the basics. Uh, there's really a ton of effects in here that I spent months on so that uh, they would be customizable and look as authentic as possible. You just got to explore these preview comps and play with the effects and see what each one does so that you can get the most out of the template. Before I go back to the presets, I need to show you a different kind of effect. Because uh, so far, I've only used these yellow copy and paste effects. So what about these blue layers? Well, as I said earlier, these are called pre-comp effects. And these effects were maybe too complicated to fit under one adjustment layer, so I created a separate comp for the effect. And in each category folder here, you'll notice that each blue pre-comp effect has its own folder. And inside that has its own Your Footage comp. Now if we open up that Your Footage comp, you can see our footage is already in here by default uh, because we put it in the main Your Footage comp up here. And sometimes you'll want to change what's in here and sometimes you won't. Let's just leave it like it is for now. And you can see back in the preview comp, you can turn these blue layers on and preview what they look like with your footage. And you can even turn off your footage layer at the bottom of the preview comp because your footage is inside each pre-comp effect. So rather than copying and pasting one of the blue layers into your main comp above your footage, these can actually replace your footage layer because it has your footage in it. So you can just copy it from here, put it into your main comp, and delete the footage layer that's already there. So now this pre-comp effect becomes your footage layer. Now there are lots of pre-comp effects to choose from, uh, not just in color grading, but throughout the template. Most of these categories have them. So what if you wanted to have more than one pre-comp effect? Well, one way is by nesting compositions. So for example, inside this color grading folder, let's say I want to add this cross-processed effect here to the dirty grunge look effect in here. So combine the two effects, essentially. I'll open up the Your Footage comp for the dirty grunge look. And I want to replace this plain footage layer with the cross-processed footage. So I'll open the folder for the cross-processed effect, and I'll grab the main comp that's in there with the uh, finished effect, and drag that into this Your Footage comp for the dirty grunge look effect. And now I can drag this dirty grunge look comp into my main comp and replace the footage layer that's already there. And I can still pile on all the copy and paste effects that I want under this. In another example, I'll add an intro effect to this film. I'll open intros and outros and then film intros. And let's pretend I previewed all of these in my preview comp here and I decided that I wanted this flicker intro one effect. So I'll open its folder, and in the pre-comps folder, I'll open the Your Footage comp. And you can see it has my plain footage in here. I don't want that. I want the dirty grunge look footage, so I'll delete that layer. And I'll go find my dirty grunge look comp and drag that in there. And if I zoom in, you can see there's a marker here with some notes. And you'll see these quite often. They have helpful info, so you'll want to double-click those to read them. This says, Your film starts here. Line up your footage so the first frame is showing here. Okay, so I'll go to that exact frame and start dragging my footage over, or just push the left bracket button, and there. It's now starting at the right place, so this is good to go. I'll close this comp and go back to my main comp, and then I'll drag this flicker intro one effect into here. Now I could replace this footage layer, uh, but I think I'll just put it on top so that I can easily turn it off later if I wanted to. And I'll shorten it up. Alright, now both these layers have my footage in them, 
and they're not in sync now, so I also need to move my bottom footage layer over to sync it up. And uh, you can see the marker is still there, so I can just move the footage to that frame. And let me show you one final example of applying the blue pre-comp effects. Uh, this time we'll apply a transition effect. So I'll open Transitions and the Transitions Preview Comp. And you can see most of these are green. And green means the same as yellow. You can copy and paste these above your footage and then just slide them over so that uh, these markers here sync with the cuts in your footage. Uh, I just wanted the transitions to stand out, so I made them green. Anyway, let's let's look at the uh, blue transitions. Uh, there's authentic and stylized transitions. The authentic ones are generally quicker, and they were modeled after authentic old film footage. The stylized ones aren't necessarily unrealistic, but they're just flashier and maybe longer. Uh, let's open this folder, and let's say I want this flash warp displace transition. I'll open the pre-comps folder and the your footage comp. And you can see there's a marker here, so let's read that. Double click. Your cut slash edit should occur at this marker. Adjust your footage so that the first frame of the second shot of your edit starts on this frame. Okay, so we need to drop in our footage and sync the cut or the edit with this uh, marker. So we'll go back and we'll get our dirty grunge look comp again and drag that in there. Delete this plain footage layer. And I'll just find any cut in here. There's one. Make sure the uh, first frame of the second shot of the cut is showing while you're at this marker. And that's ready. Now we'll go back to the Transitions Preview Comp and copy that Flash Warp Displace transition effect and then paste it into our main comp. And now I gotta find that cut again. There it is. So we'll sync everything up now using this marker. I'll move the uh, transition over and that should do it. So hopefully uh, now you have an understanding of the two types of, of effects, the uh, pre-comp effects and the copy and paste effects and how to apply them to your footage. So to wrap this tutorial up, I'll show you the presets now. Inside the presets folder, you can see they all have descriptive names. To figure out which one you want, I recommend that you watch the video on the creationeffects.com website uh, that showcases all of the presets. And then you can just come back here, find the right comp, and you could be ready to export then. Um, the alternative to going online would be to open this preview comp here, and then you can preview all of the presets with your own footage. Uh, but then you have to deal with the, the render time. So it's better to, to use the video on the website um, just as a guide to, to figure out which one you want. I'll just open up one of these. Uh, I'll open up 70s Horror. Now, if you have a few minutes and you want to add some extra style to your film, uh, there's an extra step here you can take, which really isn't hard at all. In every preset comp, let me zoom way in here. In every preset comp, there are a number of these short green layers, uh, which are turned off by default. So remember, these are transition effects, taken from the transition effects folder up here. The uh, transitions in each preset were handpicked uh, because they go best with the look of that preset. Uh, so to use them, uh, you can just turn them on and then line up the markers on each transition layer with the, uh, the cuts in your footage. Uh, so you may want to isolate your footage layer to do this quickly. Scrub along until you find a cut and then drag any of the transition layers over and sync up the, uh, the marker. And you can do that with as many cuts as you want. Uh, duplicate the transition effects as needed, um, or go grab some new ones from the Transitions Preview Comp. And I should add that you don't have to use these on the cuts in your footage. Uh, you could just turn these all on and then spread them out randomly throughout your comp, and they'll just add an interesting film glitch to your video. Okay, and the last thing you may want to do to your preset is add some audio. Almost all the presets already have some projector or camera audio, 
and you can find all those files in here in the sound effects folder so you can experiment with those if you like uh, in many cases in these presets the audio from your footage is turned off by default and uh, if you want it on you can unmute your footage here or uh, you can add some filters to your audio to make it sound like an old recording uh, just go up to this audio filters folder and open the audio filters comp and you'll see a couple options here uh, just listen to them to decide which one you like more and then you can either copy the layer from here into your main comp or uh, just copy the effects themselves okay now on a side note I know these presets are not very subtle most of these looks are really heavily damaged I did that because it's easier to turn down the effects than to add more so so usually you can make a damaged look more subtle by turning down the textures. Uh, so look at the slider controls to see if there's an option to turn down the uh, opacity or to lessen the effect. If it's a pre-comp effect, um, that is if it's one of the, the blue layers and you need to turn down the effect, just open up the comp and usually you'll find a control layer inside with slider controls uh, which will allow you to turn down the effect. So that does it. I hope you get uh, some good use out of this template. Definitely preview as many effects as you can to see all that you can do. And look for slider controls to see what your customization options are. And be sure to check out the other stuff at creationeffects.com. We have damaged VHS looks and digital glitch effects, custom 3D books, ink bleeds, custom fire, growing flourishes, flip books, and a ton of artifacts for transforming your footage into animated artwork. Okay, thanks for watching and good luck on your project.